Welcome back. For viewers of a certain age, today's date, November 22nd, brings back some awful memories. It was, of course, on this day in 1963 that President John F. Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas. It was a shocking act of violence that we are still dealing with today, with conspiracy theories about the murder and a majority of Americans saying they don't believe that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone. My colleague Chris Matthews, who has chronicled the life of Jack Kennedy, is out with a new book on his brother and best friend, this one called Bobby Kennedy, A Raging Spirit. Next year will mark the 50th anniversary of Bobby Kennedy's assassination. Chuck Dodd sat down with Chris recently, and they began talking about how Bobby Kennedy was different from other politicians of his time and ours. Well, because one of the first things I heard personally about Bobby was when I was a Capitol cop years ago, my first patronage job, my last patronage job. The cops, would, one of the guys who was a building engineer told me the only liberal Democrat who said hello to the cops every day when he walked by them was Bobby Kennedy. And it thrilled me because Bobby was always seen as the tribune of the minorities in this country. But he didn't see a distinction between black lives and policemen. He, said, he thought law and justice worked together. That law protected, uh, helped African Americans go into schools because of court orders. He could break the back of the, uh, segregation. He could go after mobsters with the law. He could protect people in the streets with the law. He thought law could be good. He believed in it. That's why they call the Justice Building right now the, the Robert Kennedy Justice Building. And I think that was a big difference. He also didn't um, discard the white working class. He said, cops and waitresses and firefighters are my people. And even though he was a tribune of minorities, and he always had great empathy for people of color, and the Chicanos, California farm workers, Appalachian, poor blacks down in the Mississippi Delta, yeah. urban blacks, he was always with them politically. But he never discarded the, the Archie bunker, Bunkers. He never said, you're not part of my team anymore. Where today's Democrats, including Obama yeah. and, and Hillary Clinton, make comments about them, the deplorables, they call them, they, they say they cling to their guns and their religion, they make fun of them, they're condescending to them. Bobby wasn't like that. Where did he get his social justice uh, gene? I say this because, look, that ain't Joe Kennedy. That ain't sure Joe Sr. Yeah. at all. Um, you know, look, he, here's a guy who, who uh, gave money to Nixon in 1950 in that Senate campaign. Who was the anti-communist? Uh, um, well, Bobby was also an anti-communist. Look, I think it's birth order. So where, yeah. I, I, okay, I that's interesting. Birth order. The first four or five chapters of this book about a kid growing up in a family where he was considered a runt. The old man you mentioned, yeah. he called him a runt to his face. He just, every time Bobby showed any sensitivity or any, uh, any kind of uh, generosity, he'd, man, he'd laugh at him. He'd say, where'd you get that from? And I think Bobby always had a fight for his father's love. And his mother, was, his mother said, he's my pet. Now, who, so this, who so, really wants that, though? Mom so, is sort of the fault. Well, what's back. interesting, then, is it by learning Bobby, are we learning Rose's politics better? I don't know if I ever got that. I know Rose's deep Catholicism uh, made Bobby a real, uh, you know, older boy in the beginning. I mean, right. he wanted to make his mother happy. He knew going to church with her on weekdays mm -hmm. really made her happy. But I also think he really took his religion very seriously. Jack took it on a different level. Jack was oddly devotional for a guy who was very secular in his life. Uh, Jack would stop and light a candle, very old church, mm -hmm. for his brother. He would go kneel at the graves of his, of his lost kids, his lost relatives, his lost sister. He was very devotional about that family religion part of it. Ja Bobby was very religious. In fact, at the end, Bobby, as he grew in his religious commitment, became very much a radical Catholic, somebody who believed in Dorothy Day and, right. and uh, the Catholic worker. And he really cared about what people like Cesar Chavez were doing. He wanted to know what was it that got Cesar Chavez and Dorothy Day up in the morning so they could take their religion and use it for good works. I'm going in a, in a, in a far field here. Do you think in my lifetime, next 50 years, there's a Cesar Chavez Day that's honored as a national holiday? Well, it would be. A la Martin Luther it would King. Be. I, think, I think because this country is changing in its yeah. complexion and changing in its demographics that there will Something be... Something tells me we might, right? I, I think that's... You may have started it just now. No, just, <laughs> no because Cesar Chavez... It just went off of that because you brought no, it up. Because Bobby, just, Bobby really... You could argue Bobby Kennedy elevated Cesar Chavez. And he would sit, he with, him, him. He would sit with him during his yeah. hunger strikes. I mean, it was very devotional. It was very religious. Bobby and, J and Jack, um, look, if you're a cursory historical reader of the yeah. Kennedy years, you think these are really close brothers. They were. But, that they, but they weren't at first. They weren't at first. It was politics that brought them together in 1952 when Bobby came in and saved Jack and got him elected to the Senate. Got him elected to presidency. It was Bobby who did it. I mean, one thing I learned writing all this book. Did Jack about get it? Jack, did Jack know that? Jack knew it. Yeah. When he was in trouble with the Bay of Pigs, Bobby come home. 
get wow. here. When he had trouble with civil rights, Bobby, he listened to Bobby. But I think the two big stories of Bobby's life that were really on his own was his whole life with Joe McCarthy, where he was with him emotionally, never left yeah. him emotionally, and yet helped to condemn him and bring him down. The second generation of Kennedys that ran for office uh, struggled. Did okay. I mean, you had Joe Kennedy the second, got yeah. to Congress, ran for governor, ended up quitting. Kathleen Kennedy Townsend got to lieutenant governor, came within a... Patrick won know, for a while. Patrick and... and uh, um, but, but they plateaued. But that happens in a lot of these families, like the, the Tafts. Yeah. I mean, you got, I, the, the Brown Roosevelt's. family. Roosevelt's. The Brown family. Well, actually, Pat Brown was succeeded by his son, who's still there. Which still is there. Incredible. Could still run for president. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but generally, these families, they'll give, another, they'll give an extra term or so to the person because of the family. And then they wait for them to prove themselves. Yeah. And it doesn't click. It doesn't click. I, I don't believe. Is this it. over? I, I don't is the believe Kennedy it. dynasty I don't, over? I don't believe in this dynasty stuff at all. I think Jack and Bobby were unique, and Teddy, too. They were unique. I think it was just an interesting mix of um, education and uh, ambition mm -hmm. and attractiveness as political figures. They're just very attractive. The book's called Raging Spirit, Bobby Kennedy. As you know, you know if Chris Matthews is writing about the Kennedys, it's something worth reading. Chuck, you know as much about politics as I do. Mm -hmm. And yet you know more. <laughs> yes. I'm not going to lie, I could watch that for the rest of the show. Also, buy Chris Matthews' book. Um, there's, much long, there's a much longer conversation between Chuck and Chris. You can hear that in its entirety on Meet the Press podcast 1947. And while you're at it, you should subscribe, subscribe to that as well. You can also binge on politics and culture with our first ever digital film festival showcase. Check that out online. Watch the heroin one. That's really interesting. And NBCNews.com slash MTP Films. And of course, you can always join the conversation on our social media pages. I know you will. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.